History of the Jack-O-Lantern Where did the custom of gutting and dismembering pumpkins for Halloween come from? Now you can stop wondering. We took it from the legend of Stingy Jack, a traditional Irish ghost story. Like all great stories, the Jack-O-Lantern tale begins with an inebriated Irishman. In his small village, he was known as Stingy Jack, and paying the bar tab was one of his least favorite activities. In his neighborhood, Jack was not exactly popular, and the locals were known to slander him behind his back. After learning about Jack's mischief one evening, Satan himself decided he needed to steal his soul. But Jack was not only frugal, he was also cunning. Stingy Jack requested a drink for the road after Satan told him it was his last call. He wanted to go out doing the one thing he loved, drinking. Moving slowly, they went to Jack's preferred bar and placed a pint order. Jack did not have any money when the bartender demanded payment. The stingy drunk hashed out a plan. Jack proposed that Satan use his abilities to transform into a silver coin to cover the bill. Satan, for some reason, agreed. Satan reduced himself to the size of a gleaming coin. Stingy Jack quickly pocketed the coin. He also had a crucifix inside that pocket. Due to the cross's influence, the devil became trapped in coin form and was unable to change back. Satan was now completely under Jack's control. Jack commanded Satan to leave him alone for another 10 years. Satan was forced to consent. The two separated after Jack freed Satan from his wool in prison. Exactly 10 years later, Satan visited Jack's sleepy Irish village to collect his impure soul. While Jack was aware of what was going on, he still desired a quick snack before entering the underworld. Stingy in order to get an apple for him, Jack asked Satan to climb an apple tree he had seen. I can't tell you why, but the devil played along. Jack swiftly carved a cross into the stump as soon as Satan was inside the tree. Satan once again stranded and at Stingy Jack's mercy. Jack demanded more this time. He disliked the idea of the underworld, probably because there was no alcohol there. Stingy Jack pleaded for the devil never to take his soul. Once again, the devil reluctantly accepted. When Stingy Jack's body finally gave out years later, his soul started the long journey into the afterlife. He first encountered St. Peter, but since he was not exactly a godly man, he was denied entry to the pearly gates. Jack descended to Hades, but there he was turned away by Satan, who vowed never to steal his soul. Stingy Jack was thus doomed to spend all of eternity in the world of the living as a shade. The devil took great pleasure in his foe's unfortunate outcome and threw him a coal of hellfire as a final insult. Jack, ever clever, carved up a turnip and put the coal inside, creating a lantern. Since that time, Jack's spirit has been lost in the world of the living, using his turnip lantern to guide him. Instantaneously, Jack of the Lantern, or simply Jack-O-Lantern, emerged from the stingy Jack's ashes. To explain the strange flickering lights that people occasionally saw hovering over peat bogs, the story of Stingy Jack was invented. According to legend, those lights are Stingy Jack's ghost wandering the world when you see one of them. Sometimes he lead a person home, sometimes to their death. Today, we are fairly certain that it is a natural phenomenon brought on by swamp gas combustion, but I will let the scientists explain that. People began carving their own renditions of Jack's Lantern all over Scotland and Ireland. They carved spooky faces into turnips or potatoes to ward off evil spirits. Large beets were frequently used in the same manner in England, where the custom had spread. When people started moving to North America, they brought that tradition with them from all over Ireland, Scotland, and England. Currently, pumpkins are used for carving rather than turnips or beets. They were much bigger and simpler to carve, particularly for kids. An enormous wave of Irish immigrants arrived in North America as a result of the Irish potato famine in the mid-1800s. That event likely made jack-o'-lanterns even more common. Jack-o'-lanterns had established themselves as a Halloween tradition by 1866. On November 1st of that year, a newspaper in Ontario reported, The old-time custom of keeping up Halloween was not forgotten last night by the youngsters of the city. They had their maskings and their merrymakings, and perambulated the streets after dark in a way which was no doubt amusing to themselves. There was a great sacrifice of pumpkins from which to make transparent heads and faces, lighted up by the unfailing two inches of tallow candle. 